box. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Uh, Mr. Balkis, uh, Amna Beg, and uh, Law Chair, distinguished audience. I take a lot of pride in welcoming uh, the distinguished uh, participants of the seminar in IPRI's uh, very seminal kind of this event, which celebrates uh, or uh, puts into focus the violence against women on this UN uh, uh, affiliated day for elimination of violence against women. And uh, we are looking forward to a very effusive participation by the audience uh, on a subject that is very, very important and a subject that touches every heart. Violence against women is a fundamental human rights violation. So this is a concept that needs to be inter internalized by every live, breathing, sensitive heart. Uh, according to uh, some statistics, uh, in 2020 alone, 81,000 women were killed because of this violence and they fell victim to this violence. And uh, the most poignant thing is that amongst those 80, uh, 81,000, 47,000 or 58 percent were uh, the victims of the close associates, both family and non-family. And uh, as of now, as the statistics uh, speak in their uh, all gory uh, uh, presence, one woman gets uh, a victim, gets killed in every 11 minutes in the world. So uh, it's a responsibility that is uh, not only uh, of United Nations, but the and but the societies which are still evolving on that ladder to the civilizational path as a society we have progressed a lot because we've got a code with us which is uh, enshrined in our religious injunctions which is enshrined in our constitution and uh, the constitution plus our religious moral code which is the word make them of our all moral and, uh, uh, you know, uh, living, that clearly stipulates that rights to women are a clear indicator of a society's uh, scale on the civilizational ladder. So I'll not uh, speak much because we have to launch a report also, and we take a lot of pride that uh, EP took this lead in doing uh, uh, empirical study, which was based on uh, crimes against uh, women, gender, and uh, crime against religious persecuted minorities. And uh, the team went through a lot of uh, surveys and access was granted to the jails, which is a very, very unique uh, uh, opportunity that was afforded to us uh, through our special linkage with the police and uh, we are thankful to uh, the department of home punjab the federal government fia and the police department for uh, a very very uh, effusive uh, effort in our research so we are looking forward to this uh, debate with a lot of alacrity and i'm sure that what we say and what we talk will not wither on the wine and as they say, uh, when Abraham Lincoln spoke on the fields of Gettysburg, he said that uh, live men, both uh, living and dead, uh, has uh, consecrated this ground with their bloods. History will never not, not long remember what we say here, but it shall never forget what they did there. So what we speak here would would uh, be of little note, but uh, what these 
advocacy groups are actually doing by way of uh, you know legislation by way of uh, advocacy by way of uh, uh, going on the streets to uh, agitate for their rights that is the real battle that is being waged for the women's rights and i'm sure that uh, most of us uh, would be sensitized much better today after this session so with these few words so i uh, call upon uh, our chair law ms maham the moderator of this event to come and please conduct the proceedings Thank you, everyone, for joining us to, for this seminar to commemorate the International Day for Elimination of Violence Against Women. The importance of this day is not lost on anyone. Globally, nearly one in three women are, have been abused in their lifetime. This situation is exasperated in times of global pandemics, such as the COVID-19 and humanitarian crisis and climate disasters, as was seen in the Balochistan situation that Pakistan faced. Pakistan is no different, where violence against women takes many forms, physical, psychological, and sexual. However, the good thing is that there is recognition in both the public and private affairs in Pakistan that a concentrated effort needs to be made to better the situation of women in every socioeconomic group. The good thing is that Pakistan is part of the international legal landscape that contones and has taken active steps to eliminate violence against women. In this respect, Pakistan is a signatory to CEDAW, the Convention on the Elimination of Discrimination against, for Violence Against Women. And the most important thing that CEDAW does is that it defines what violence is. And for uh, the for setting the ground for this conversation, uh, I would read out that definition, which is that any act of gender-based violence that results in or is likely to result in physical, sexual, or psychological harm or suffering to women, including threats of such acts, coercion, or arbitrary deprivation of liberty, whether occurring in public or private sphere amounts to violence. So it's important that the angel definition that violence is only physical is no longer applicable and violence against women, including in Pakistan, takes many forms. This recognition is crucial in this day and age. The Constitution of Pakistan is a progressive document. It makes binding that there will be no discrimination on the basis of gender. In pursuance of this, the planning policies to ensure gender equality have happened on the federal and provincial levels. And considering that these have also led to substantial socioeconomic and sustainable development in Pakistan. It, this statistic is important because women constitute 51% of the population in Pakistan. And a survey by the Planning Commission showed that now women constitute 22.7% of the labor workforce. With this backdrop, uh, our esteemed panelists today consist of a cross-section of women from the private and public sector who worked tirelessly to help women and advocate for their rights. Our first panelist for today is Ms. Amna Beg. Ms. Beg is the Deputy Director of the Federal Investigation Agency and belongs to the Police Service of Pakistan. She has served as the SP Operations in the Islamabad Capital Territory Police. She has also served as the head of the Islamabad Police Gender Protection Unit, a government initiative to assist women and transgender individuals in their fight against gender-based violence and other injustices. She was previously nominated for the U.S. Department of State's International Women of Courage Award. Ms. Bay, can I please ask you to join us on stage? Thank you. 
Our second panelist is Ms. Vinji Staira, who has served as the executive director of Shirakat since 2010. Shirakat is a non-governmental organization working on human rights and women rights in particular. Ms. Tahira has extensive experience in working on humanitarian issues, economic empowerment, and women rights. She has worked on health rights for women, such as reproductive rights. She has also considerable experience in capacity building and training designs aimed at furthering social equality in Pakistan. Ms. Tahira, could you please join us on stage? Thank you. Our third panelist is going to be joining us in a few minutes, and I will introduce her when she comes. I will now request Ms. Bay to please join us and say a few words. Thank you. Steam guest, uh, it's an honor to be here again. Last year, we had uh, a similar panel discussion uh, here at Dupree. And I'm very happy to know that, you know, our national departments are taking the cause very seriously. And they're not only just having these discussion and advocacy groups, they're also researching on them. The numbers that are coming out from IPRI uh, show a very, I'd say, gory picture of what's happening. Uh, but then again, it's only when we accept that there is a problem that we can move on to the solutions. Um, I believe the actions, with the actions, I think advocacy and activism is as important. Until and unless we have men, we have women, we have transgenders talking about the issue, which is violence against women and transgenders. I don't think we as a country can move ahead in terms of economic, economy, in terms of democracy, in terms of rule of law, etc. Women play a very pivotal role in all of this. Maybe it is not uh, as such tangible in, in, in terms of how we see them in our society, but generally the academics, the people who are researching on the, uh, the issue are always of the fact that it is only women who can ensure that the participation of women in the economy, which can ensure that we, we have a stable economy, we have a growing economy. As long as we have dependence on us in terms of women who are not working, no economy in the world has progressed. So I think empowerment is linked to not just the economic structures of the country, but then again, here I would want to talk about something else as well. We, we, we speak about physical violence that we see around us. We see, speak about, uh, you know, femicide that's happening around us, but then this is, this is one type of violence, I believe. But then there is another type of violence which exists around us and which we generally do not talk about. And that, I feel, is the sort of violence which is more important in terms of ensuring that, you know, the women of the country are empowered. That is the structural form of violence. The direct form of violence that we talk about is the one where we, we see that, you know, women are being hit by their partners, women are being killed by their partners, women... Uh, face domestic abuse, et cetera, et cetera. That is the direct uh, form of it. But then again, I think the more important one is the structural form of violence. When you see how all of the country's women are just kept from opportunities, it is ingrained in the structures of our society. We see that in the same household, a man, a boy child is given all the opportunity where a woman child is just, or a girl child is just told that, you know, her ultimate goal is to get married. We see that these are such, there are such brilliant girls who, who end up becoming doctors, but they're not allowed to practice. We see that, you know, a family who is able to provide for all of its children is not providing for a certain child just because of her gender. And we don't know how much potential that child holds. holds. You don't know if, if she is given the opportunity, what all she can be. So that is the sort of violence that needs to be brought into discussion now. We need to talk about how we are keeping away a whole 
as 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 Mohan said, that half of the country's population is women, which is a hundred million plus women. And we are keeping so many of them away just because we have these stereotype gender roles. We think that when a girl child is born, we think that her only and only role, in, even if she does well in her professional life, her ultimate goal is to, to get married, to have a child. If she's not doing that, she's incomplete. Maybe she's doing something wrong. When a man is born, all he is expected to do is do financially well, to uh, contribute to the family's finances, to take care of his parents in terms of bringing in the money, food on the table. But then again, until and unless we have empowered women, it's very hard for us to curtail violence against women. And I'll give you examples of that. I've seen that in my line of work. I've seen um, there was a case in Pindi with me where a woman was shot four times by her husband and she miraculously survived. And then after four or five months, she came to me and she said that, you know, I want to do a Razi Nama with my husband. Razi Nama means that, you know, you come to an agreement and you forgive the person. And I was shocked and I asked her, what's the reason? I said, do you, do you remember what happened? You could have died in that process. It's only God that saved you. Allah ki marzi thi ke aap ki And she said, it's been four months. My children have just had two pairs of shoes. They do not, they're not going to school. I'm living with my father and my brothers have stopped supporting me. Where do I go? So we need to understand there is no one-stop solution for gender-based violence in anywhere in the world, not just Pakistan. We need to understand that everything needs to come into play to ensure that this ends. And there are countless, countless, countless cases. You, you, you and I have seen that happen in our families growing up. We still do to an extent. We see it happening around us and everybody is like, and in reality, that is true. That is true. A mother cannot, in most cases, live away from her children. And because she's not financially stable, and because you, the, the, we as a society generally do not believe in giving women, I'd say, their inheritance for that matter. We keep them from financial resources just so that they are not empowered enough to take a stand for themselves. And that is what is contributing to this. That is what is exacerbating the situation. Navigating the criminal justice system anywhere in the world is an expensive business. It requires money. The reality of it is it goes on for years. Even if you're going through a civil case, if you, even if you're going through a criminal case, it's it's not not just that a woman would come in, we would register a case, and there would be a solution to it. No. So all of us needs to come need to come together. I mean, everybody. I and now I see that everybody is playing such a, a vital role. There are advocacy groups. They're talking about that. They're NGOs. They're providing free legal aid. They're shelter homes. Police is sensitive to the issue. But then again, until and unless I personally feel that we do not address the structural form of violence, which is ingrained in the society's structure, which is keeping away a whole, I'd say, chunk of the society from their full potential, I do not think we would be able to reach a solution. Thank you so much. Thank you, Ms. Bail. I would now like to request Ms. Taira to please come and shed light on the role that NGOs plays, uh, play in helping eliminate violence against women in Pakistan. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum. I'm a teacher, activist, feminist, so, President Saab, aapki jazat se, uh, sorry, I put it on silent, but abhi bhi kuch kuch bol raha. Uh, aapki jazat se, mein urdu mein baat karungi, 
क्योंकि हमें यही लिंग्विस्टिकली भी और रिसर्च ने भी यही बताया कि अपनी जुबान जो बात की जाती है उसका असर जल्दी होता है और ज्यादा होता है तो थोड़ा सा मैं आपको अपना ये जो तीस साल का तीस साल से ज्यादा की हमारी एक्टिविज्म रही जिसमें और कम्युनिटी में काम रहा उसने बहुत सारी चीजों को सोचने पे मजबूर किया ये नहीं है कि तीस साल पहले जब मैं कहता था अखबार में खबर आती थी तो वो कहते थे कवा कान ले होगा एक्चुअली वो औरत का कान काट दिया किसी ने हस्बैंड ने और वो कवा उसको ले गया तो इंस्टेड ऑफ फोकसिंग इंसानी तकलीफ पे फोकस करने की बजाय वो उसको सेंसेशनलाइज करते थे अब ये नहीं होता वो बहुत सारा काम इस दौरान हुआ है और बहुत बदला है मगर हम उस तक भी ये सोचते रहे जैसे फेमिनिज्म में भी जी वो तो भी स्टेजेस हैं मगर एक मिसाल आपको दू जैसे रेडिकल फेमिनिज्म में ज्यादा ग्लोबली ये शोर होता था कि ये मर्द ही दुश्मन है औरत का तो बहुत सारी अफ्रीकन औरतें और मेरी जैसी औरतें जिनके बाप में मेरे घर में मेरे अब्बा की बेटियां थी ज्यादा तो वो पढ़ाना चाहते थे और बिलीव में एक वफद आता था मर्दों का जब हमें पांचवी से आठवीं में जानना था जब आठवीं से दसवीं में जानना था जब कॉलेज में जानना था उनको तरह तरह के ताने दिए जाते थे कि आप खत लिख लेंगी कमाई तो नहीं खानी वगैरह वगैरह तो जो है ना हम ये कहते थे साउथ एशियन और अफ्रीकन वाकते कि मर्द दुश्मन नहीं है अगर हमारे घर के मतों ने हमारा साथ ना दिया होता हमें इनकरेज ना किया होता तो हम यही ना होते उसके फिर वो बातचीत से कुछ साल लगे और फिर ये जेंडर इक्वालिटी के उस पर हम पहुंचे इसी तरह तशद पे जब हम काम करते रहे करते रहे और औरतों पे फोकस करते रहे और आमना ने काफी इसमें वो बताई मिसालें आपने डेटा शेयर किया आपने वो चीजें शेयर की तो सोच ये हम ये सोचते रहे कि इसमें आखिर वो कौन सा लॉग है जिसको हटाएंगे तो ये बदलेगा आपको पता है ना जब वो दरिया में फेंकते रहते हैं लॉग्स के आगे चले जाएं फिर वो कहीं स्टक हो जाए तो फिर वो गांव से एक लॉग मैनेजर को बुलाते हैं वो आके उसको स्टडी करता है और कहते हैं ये तीन हटाओगे तो फ्लो चल पड़ेगा इससे हमें ये पता चला कि सिर्फ औरतों पे ही नहीं मतों के साथ भी काम करने की जरूरत है क्योंकि जो सोशल कॉन्स्ट्रक्ट जिस माशरे ने औरतों को बनाया उसी माशरे ने मर्दों को भी बनाया जो जबर औरतें सहती हैं उसी तरह का जबर मर्द भी सहते हैं और जो है ना तशद तो सिर्फ औरतों पे नहीं होता भी डोमिनेंट ही नहीं पता है कि मेजोरिटी औरतों पे होता है और वो पावर डायनामिक्स की वजह से मगर ये नहीं होता कि औरतें वायलेंट नहीं होती घरों में आप देख रहे हैं डोमेस्टिक सर्वेंट्स के साथ और तो ये जो पावर का आ, वो है ना उसकी एग्जिबिशन उसकी एक्सरसाइज कैसे आप ताकत को जिसके ऊपर भी आपको ताकत है उसको आप इस्तेमाल कैसे करते हैं उसको एक्सप्रेस कैसे करते हैं जाहिर कैसे करते हैं वो बहुत बड़ा एक वो है मसला और दो मिनट आपके लूंगी इस पे फिर बहुत डिस्कशन भी हुई डायलॉग्स भी हुए इस पे लोगों ने सोचा भी फिलोसफाइज किया थेरी बनाई तो बेसिकली जो इसके छह सात पॉइंट्स है ना वो बड़े इंपॉर्टेंट हैं जो माइंडसेट को बनाता है तो सबसे पहला मैंने जिक्र कर दिया कि सोशल कॉन्स्ट्रक्ट है खास तरह से मर्दों को बिहेव करने की तरबियत दी जाती है लोना ने बचपन से ही छह साल का बच्चा है 
اس کو آپ کہتے ہیں کہ یہ مسجد میں مولوی کو سری دیا اور وہ بچہ از ناٹ الاؤڈ ٹو بی افریڈ اگر وہ کہے گا مجھے بھیڑے سے ڈر لگتا ہے وہ ہر ایک اس کو کہے گا کیسا مرد ہے تو بچہ ہے بھائی نہیں ہے مرد وہ نہیں مار مار کے آنے مار نہ کھانا وہ باہر سے مار کھا کے آئے گا تو گھر سے اس کو اور مار پڑے گی تو یہ والی جو چیزیں ہم بڑی محنت کرتے ہیں مردوں کو ان کے ایموشن سے علیحدہ کرنے کے لیے ان کو سخت دل بنانے کے لیے جب وہ بن جاتے ہیں سخت دل اب بڑے ہو کے اب اس نے ماں کا خیال نہیں کیا بیوی کا ساتھ دیا اب آپ کی بات نہیں سنی تو پھر وہ کہتے ہیں کہ تنا سنگ دل آدمی ہے مگر ہم نے اس کو سنگ دل بنانے میں بڑی محنت کی ہے بہت محنت کی ہے اس کے لیے ہم نے ایک سٹینڈرڈ یہ بنا دیا کہ تمہیں لمبا ہونا ہے تمہیں فزیکلی اسٹرانگ ہونا ہے تمہیں اپنی جو ہے نا طاقت کا اظہار ایسے ایسے کرنا ہے وہ دن میں نے آپ دیکھ لیں جو دبلا پتلا نازک سا ہوگا اس کو کہیں گے سی سی ہے یعنی وہ بھی ایک فزیک کا فزیکل جو ہے ایبلٹیز ان کا بھی ان کے اوپر ایک جب ہے کہ آپ نے ضرور جم جانا ہے آپ نے اپنے ٹولے بنانے ہیں آپ نے اس طرح سے طاقتور ہونا ہے اگر نہیں ہے تو وہ دن میں نے بھی ایک دوسرے کے اوپر لوگ تنس کرتے ہیں ان کو ڈینیگریٹ کرتے ہیں ان کو مرد نہیں سمجھا جاتا اسی طرح سے جو اور اس میں ہے جو انٹائٹلمنٹ ہے بہت سی وائلنس کی وجہ کیا ہے کہ ان کو ایک سینس آف انٹائٹلمنٹ ہے میں باہر سے آیا ہوں مجھے پانی ملنا چاہیے بہن اور بھائی اکٹھے کھیلتے ہوئے باہر سے آئی ہیں تو بہن کے اوپر آڈر ہوگا کہ بھائی کو بڑا پسین نہ آیا ہوا اس کو پانی دو تو وہ جو سینس آف انٹائٹلمنٹ ہے نا جو ہم اتنا سنتے ہیں کھانا گرم نہیں دیا تو بیوی کو مارا روٹیاں صحیح نہیں پکی جل گئی تو بیوی کو مارا اس وجہ سے ہے کہ ان کو شروع سے معاشرے نے ایک سینس آف انٹائٹلمنٹ دے دی کہ آپ بیٹھیں گے آپ کو کسی نے سرو کرنا ہے آپ نے ہاں تو وہی دونوں ہیں نا عورتوں کے بھی اور مردوں کے بھی وہی کام برتن عورت بھی دھو سکتی ہے مرد بھی دھو سکتی ہے مگر اس کو یہ سینس آف انٹائٹلمنٹ معاشرہ دیتا ہے بچے کے پین پر دو ہاتھ والا کوئی بھی انسان ٹرانس جینڈر ہو مرد ہو عورت ہو سب سب بدل سکتے ہیں مگر یہ منا ہی ایک سوسائٹی نے ہمارے اوپر ڈالی یہ جو پاور ہے نا اور ایک سرٹن بیہیویئر کی سن مرید نہیں ہونا تو وہ جب تک دو لگا نہیں لے گا وہ ثابت نہیں کر سکتا کہ میں سن مرید نہیں ہوں تو اس سلسلے یہ بہت سوچ کے یہ انٹرنیشنلی بھی بڑی ڈسکشن رہی ہے ایک ہم ممبر ہیں گلوبل الائنس گلوبل مین گلوبل الائنس اور اس میں یہ ہے انگیجنگ مین ان بوائز فار جینڈر ایکوالٹی گورنمنٹ نے سر آپ کے ساتھ یہ شیئر کرنا کہ گورنمنٹ نے پچھلی اپنی دو تین جو تھی نا ان کی پلاننگ اس میں انہوں نے انگیجنگ مین بوائز کو شامل کیا تھا اور این سی ایس ڈبلیو کے بھی مینڈیٹ میں شامل کیا تھا مگر وہ انگیجنگ مین بوائز کی بات تو کرتے ہیں یوزلی جینڈر ایکوالٹی بھول جاتے ہیں بیچ میں تو یہ جو ہے نا کس لیے انگیج کرنا تو اس میں پھر پاکستان میں بھی ایک الائنس ہے ساؤتھ ایشیا لیول پہ بھی الائنس ہے تو یہ سمجھ کے کہ دونوں کے ساتھ کام کرنے کی ضرورت ہے جیسے انہوں نے کہا راضی نامہ کیوں کرنے آئی ہے نا کیونکہ اس کے پاس پاور نہیں ہے پاور مت کے پاس ہے اور جو بھی ڈومیننٹ آپ پولیٹکس میں دیکھ لیں آپ اکانومی میں دیکھ لیں آپ ایم ایم سیز ملٹی نیشنل کارپوریشنز کو دیکھ لیں جس کے پاس پاور ہوگی وہ اس کو اپنے اس کے لیے استعمال کرے گا تو یہ پاور کا بیلنس ہم نے کس طرح بنانا ہے تو ہم لوگوں نے بہت سی آرگنائزیشن پاکستان میں اب تک ریسپانسو کام کرتی رہی ہیں اور بہت ویلیوبل کام ہے 
जो ये वायलेंस हुई तो फिर उनको लीगल सपोर्ट साइको सोशल सपोर्ट इकोनॉमिक सपोर्ट किस किस तरह की सर्वाइवर को देनी है मगर जो प्रिवेंशन का काम है ना दैट रिलेट्स टू द माइंड सेट आप सोचते कैसे हैं आपने मुआरे में तब्दीली कैसे लेके आनी है और आपने हर एक फर्द को मुआरे के फर्द को बिना इम्तियाज उनको किस तरह से सबको इकट्ठे ये तब्दीली ला के एम्पावर कैसे करना है कि वो मिलके काम करने में उनको और पावर शेयर करने में उनको कोई थ्रेट ना हो मतलब मर्दों को ये भी तो होता है ना एक सेंस ऑफ ये रिस्क कि मैंने अगर अगर मेरी बहन ने बाजार में किसी लड़के से बात कर ली तो शायद उस लड़के को खुद फर्क ना पड़ता हो उसको ये फर्क पड़ता है कि इर्द गिर्द के बाकी मर्द उसको कहेंगे तूने इसका गला क्यों ना मारा तूने इसको सजा क्यों ना दी हाउ डे अशी और तुम मर्द नहीं हो जब तक के तुमने इस चीज का बदला ना ले लिया तो वो वायलेंस वहीं से जनरेट होती है आप देखिए जंगों में भी रेप्स क्यों होते हैं मतलब क्या मर्दों की औरतों की इफ्फत और इसमत है उसकी हिफाजत करना उनपे फर्ज है क्या मर्दों में मर्दों की इफ्फत और इसमत नहीं होती उसकी हिफाजत करना उनकी जिम्मेदारी नहीं है तो ये चीजें जो है ना ये करके मतलब इसको बहुत समझ के तो हम लोग ज्यादा अब काम कर रहे हैं प्रिवेंशन पे जिसमें कम्युनिटीज में भी मर्दों और औरतों दोनों के साथ यंग लड़कों और लड़कियों दोनों के साथ ये बातचीत करके डिस्कशन करके इसको समझने की कोशिश करना कि अगर आप ट्रांसफॉर्म करेंगे अपने आप को तो उसका असर क्या होगा क्या आपको कम तर समझा जाएगा मर्दों में क्या औरतों को बहुत पावरफुल समझा जाएगा और उसका थ्रेट क्या है और रिलेशनशिप नई कैसे बनाई जा सकती है कई तो सोसाइटीज ऐसी हैं और हमारे यहाँ भी कुछ ग्रुप्स ऐसे हैं जहां पे के मर्दों मर्दों की बहुत ज्यादा दोस्ती होती है और मतलब एक इंटीमेट लेवल की दोस्ती भी होती है तो उनसे जब पूछा जाता है कि भाई फिर आप शादी करते क्यों तो कहते हैं बच्चों के लिए तो कम्युनिकेशन बाहर होती है कम्युनिकेशन घर के अंदर नहीं होती क्योंकि वहां आपका मकसद कुछ और है तो बहुत सी ऐसी चीजें हैं जिन पे हमें बातचीत करके उनको खुला खुला देख के और उनपे करने की जरूरत है अभी हम लोगों ने इसमें यूथ लीडर्स ओवर ट्वेल्व यंग 19 टू 18 टू 29 एज ग्रुप के लड़कों और लड़कियों को ट्रेन करके कम्युनिटी लीडर्स बनाया तो वो अपने ग्रुप्स के साथ वो करते हैं और मॉनिटर भी करते हैं कहीं अगर 12 साल की लड़की की शादी हो रही है तो वो छोटे यंग लड़के की तो कोई नहीं सुनेगा मगर वो फिर बुजुर्गों के साथ बातचीत करके उनको साथ में ला के करते हैं कोई डोमेस्टिक वायलेंस की बात हो वो आ, उसमें कोशिश करते हैं कि बड़े उसमें शामिल होके पर्टिकुलरली अर्बन एरियाज में कि वो उसके ऊपर काम करें और तकरीबन सत्तर हजार कम्युनिटी के लोगों को हम रेगुलरली अप्रोच करते हैं कितना इसका फर्क पड़ेगा आई डोंट नो मगर हम लोगों ने पिछले से पिछले साल कोई तीन सौ साठ के करीब रिलीजियस लीडर्स के साथ बातचीत करनी शुरू की और इसमें दिहाई भी सुनी भी शिया भी क्रिश्चियन हिंदू सिख इन और इनको हमने कहा अपने अपने कॉन्ट्रीगेशन में जब आप खुदा देते हैं तो वहां ये कुछ बातचीत करनी शुरू करें अः औरतों के हकूक की वायलेंस के इश्यूज पे बच्चियों के हकूक की भी तो वो साल बाद जब हमने उनसे बातचीत की तो पता चला कि ग्यारह हजार से ज्यादा बच्चियों को वाले ने स्कूल में एनरोल करवाया यानी मौलवी साहब का या ये जो रिलीजियस लीडर्स थे इनका तो एक पैसा भी नहीं लगा इन्होंने तो बातचीत की ना उनको कन्विंस किया तो वो माँ बाप ने उसको खुद आगे वो किया बहुत सारे उन्होंने हमें रिपोर्ट की कुछ छह सौ से ज्यादा उन्होंने केसेस 
अली मेरज के वो रोकने में कामयाब हुए बहुत जगहों पे उन्होंने स्पाउजल वायलेंस के केसेस को के दरमियान सुलह करवाई मर्दों को भी मॉनिटर किया उनको भी एडमोनिश किया कि आप और उसके कई तरीके उन्होंने इस्तेमाल किए जो उन्होंने शेयर भी किए कि औलाद का वो कह के वगैरह वगैरह क्योंकि राइट्स की बात करना बड़ा मुश्किल है और राइट्स की बात समझना बड़ा मुश्किल है तो जुबान को लैंग्वेज को ऐसे इस्तेमाल करना पड़ता है कम्युनिटी में जिससे उनकी समझ में बात आ जाए उनके स्टेटस को को बहुत बड़ा थ्रेक्ट नजर आ रहा हो कि बल्कि वो फिर इमीडिएटली कहते हैं जेंडर मेंडर की तरफ से लेके आ गए वेस्टर्न एजेंडा वगैरह तो हम तो बोलती चली जाऊंगी और इतनी चीजें भी शेयर करने को मगर यहाँ मैं खत्म करती हूँ अगर आप में से किसी को बाद में भी इस मौजू में इंटरेस्ट हो हम ट्रेनिंग करते हैं इस पे मैंने मैं इसको लेने चीज पे ताकि मर्दों को भी समझ में आए कि ये और औरतों को भी समझ में आए कि ये जो होता है रद्द अमल ये क्यों हो रहा है ये पर्सनल नहीं है ये इसलिए नहीं है कि उसकी ना अपनी मर्द को पसंद मियाँ को पसंद तो अगर आप में से किसी का मजीद इंटरेस्ट हो इसमें हम ट्रेनिंग जो कराते हैं वो सबसे मुख्तर ट्रेनिंग होती है पांच दिन की मगर लंबी भी होती है एक एक महीने की भी होती है तो अगर आप में से किसी को इंटरेस्ट हो तो जरूर आइएगा हमारा एक वॉलंटियर्स की बेस भी है तो अगर कोई आप में से वॉलंटियर करना चाहे तो जरूर रहा करें बहुत शुक्रिया और आपका आपकी टीम का बहुत बहुत शुक्रिया कि आपने मुझे बड़ा अच्छा लगा कि आप जो रिसर्च करते हैं वो आगे पॉलिसी लेवल पे लिखी जाती है सुनी जाती है क्योंकि फ्रेंकली हमारी सी एस ओस की आवाज बड़ी छोटी है हमें गवर्नमेंट तक इतनी रसाई नहीं होती तो बहुत आप लोगों को हम रियली अप्रिशिएट करते हैं कि इस तरह का थिंक टैंक मौजूद है और इनपुट प्रोवाइड करता है हुकूमत को जहाँ पे कि अगर रूल्स ऑफ बिजनेस में एक लाइन बदली जाए ना तो अगले सौ साल के लिए इफेक्टिव हो जाएगी हम जितना मर्जी शोर मचाते रहे वो थोड़ी देर का होगा फिर वो खत्म हो जाएगा थैंक यू सो मच फॉर इनवाइटिंग Thank you, Madam. Um, while we wait for our third speaker, she's on her way. Yes, she's five minutes away. Yeah, we can start. We can start with questions from the audience. If anyone has a question. We can talk. Okay. uh miss amna i had a question that came up in my mind from uh, our discussion as well um from from what you spoke about and from the government's role in eliminating violence do, do you think that currently there is any gap that you feel could be better filled from the gov- from the governance structure that's prevalent the legal structure that's prevalent and uh, since you deal directly in on the ground level with this issue are there any legal gaps that you feel that come up in your uh thank you naham i hope you can hear me uh this one thing i'd like to highlight over here in terms of uh, particularly uh, physical form of violence that we we see around us and uh when we talk about countering it what are the ways to counter it right and w- what is the most one of the most effective ways to counter violence as such um as madam said that you know you need to change the mindsets altogether in order for us to reach a, a positive conclusion regarding that however however once violence has happened uh what do we do uh ek do cheeze main highlight karna chahungi जो बहुत इम्पोर्टेंट है वो ये है कि अपार्ट फ्रॉम एज एज वी नोन एज एन ओवरली लेजिस्लेटेड कंट्री एज वी सी दैट यू नो दिस अ लॉट ऑफ सेंसिटिविटी इन टर्म्स ऑफ द गवर्नमेंट रियलाइजिंग द इम्पोर्टेंस ऑफ दिस इशू वन ऑफ द थिंग्स दैट आई रियली वॉन्टेड टू हाईलाइट ओवर हेयर इज हाउ द सोसाइटी इन जनरल द वुमेन इन जनरल डू नॉट हैव अ लॉट ऑफ आइडिया हाउ टू गो अबाउट 
we do not know. Most of us do not know. I did not know before I joined police, like how do we report a case, right? So legal literacy ke upar focus karna bahut zaruri hai, jis mein aap, jis NGOs ka bahut ek major role hai, advocacy groups ka bahut major role hai in, in telling women what their rights are, in telling them what to do when you are in a situation like this, what are, where to go, who to call for help, what are your rights? So you would not believe that, uh, you know, there are cases when women come up with severe violence, uh, severe structural violence, from physical form of violence, where they have broken bones and they have been brought in by somebody else. And the women would come up to us and say, can we register an FIR on this? Like, so they did not even know. So they had to wait a certain, to, to reach a certain severity of the violence for it to be reported, right? So the legal literacy aspect of it in general, it, it needs to be communicated to the community. It needs to be told to the women that these are your rights. Hain. This is how you go about them. But then there is another important thing that we, where the role of government is extremely important, which is of reporting. So I personally believe that we can counter violence by reporting it. So until and unless we are not, we are not reporting it, the 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 criminal justice system is not coming into play. We do not. We do not see a perpetrator being taken to task by the by the police or the criminal the, the courts, etc. I have seen a lot of cases of uh, I'd say murder where a male partner has killed his female partner. It could be his wife, it could be his sister, it could be his girlfriend, anything. And what I see is that whenever I ask, I've, I've served in places like Gujarat, I've served in Rawalpindi, I've served in Sabah, so I have a fair idea of how these things work. So every time I go to a crime scene of what I call a femicide, and I ask them that, you know, I ask the family, okay, was this the first time the, the partner or the person, the sibling hit uh, the, the, the woman? And you would not believe it is still... I'm still waiting that there'd come a time where they say, yes, this was the first time. It's never the first. So it happens over time, right? So the perpetrator gets emboldened enough to take such a drastic step because previously nobody's stopping him. He's not being reported. So when he broke a bone or when he broke her nose or when he, uh, you know, broke her arm, nobody brought them to the, the police. It was sorted between the families. She was just told to like keep quiet about it. And then when eventually it was reported to us, it's too late. And in, in, in opposition to that, we see that whenever a case of domestic violence is reported, it's very rare that it would go again to that or it would reach such a severity. So reporting is so important, but these two things, this legal literacy and reporting, all of that is super, super interlinked. And that is where the governments need to come into play. They need to have more female officers. A lady victim, uh, a transgender victim would always feel comfortable talking about the issue with the transgender. A woman would always feel comfortable talking about her issues with a woman. And a man would always feel comfortable talking about his issues with a man, right? So that's how the society is structured. So until and unless the government has more uh, lady officers, I'd call them women officers, I don't think we can, we can totally, completely, uh, you know, address the issue. And I'd say that when we had, we, we inaugurated this gender protection unit in the in the six months of in its inauguration, just in Islamabad, we had a thousand plus complaints just in six months. So what it says is that, you know, because we, we told everyone whatever we projected on social media regarding the, uh, the unit was that from the start of your complaint till the end of your investigation, if it's converted into an FIR, if it's not, etc., everything would be handled by a lady police officer. So that made a huge difference, right? So this is where it's the human resource that we need to at, at the moment invest into in order to ensure that more, you know, victims come out and report violence. Ma'am, so you mentioned uh, literacy or like people being literate with regards to what to do if such a situation happens. Um, I would misfeel myself for slightly, and what I feel like the our our laws are also kind of scattered all over. 
so when people are trying to figure out what to do there's there's also like they're all over the place so i people also feel like there is there needs to be a consolidation of the legal instruments out there that are applicable to this particular situation um maham i think um yeah in in a sense maybe we can say that but then again i feel that there is so much more at the basic level that we need to correct first before moving on to you know the laws we do have uh, enough laws to be honest we do have enough laws to uh, register a case in whatever physical violence circumstance a woman comes to us like if she comes with sexual violence we have a way to go about we have a laws to to address that if we, a woman comes to us with physical violence we have laws to address that but it's just that uh, you know it's the, the basics are what i feel that it's it's a third world country let's just be honest we are limited on human resource we are limited on material resources so we need to first focus on that i'll give you an example of this is that if i have i'm, I'm my investigation officer is handling a rape case right so that man is or that woman is so overburdened with work because we have such few investigation officers that he has around on average a uh, 35 to 40 cases going on so how much effort do you think he's going to put into one particular case investigating it and it's not just that it's just the fact that that man has to pay from his own pocket to take that victim for dna tests to look for for courts etc etc so the investigation costs are so low how do you expect a man who is overburdened with work who does not have resources to do a good investigation you can't right so it's i don't think instead of yes of course the laws are important we have this anti rape ordinance coming in etc etc but before that we will get to it i i hope we do inshallah we will it's just the basics that need to be corrected it's just that if a woman cannot go to another female police officer to report her issue what would that law make a difference if she's just sitting home and not reporting it right so for me those things take precedence right now yeah i think we're going we're going to now move on to our third speaker My third panelist for today is Ms. Ms. Michal Malik. Thank you for joining us, Ms. Malik. Ms. Michal Malik is a chairperson of the Peace and Culture Organization, which works on the rights of people in Indian occupied Jammu and Kashmir. Ms. Malik and her organization have been striving to bring peace by raising voice against Indian brutality in IIOJ K. Ms. Malik is a passionate freedom fighter and a well-known craft revivalist fighting for the rights of oppressed men, women, and children. Ms. Malik, can can I please invite you to share your views on so, the topic? Please. There, here, here. Okay, okay, okay. move on. Uh, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. I'm really honored and privileged uh, to be invited here. uh by sir and your entire team of epri uh and it was a remarkable talk i'm sorry i came late i i had some legal engagement um regarding uh um, violence against women i was involved in some personal issue with someone and she's absolutely right that you know um this factor of communication of the taboos or ye nahi kehna or hai bichari or uh, you know uh, getting to sympathies of uh, uh, being uh, a victim or just you know being helpless um because i'm mostly going to focus on uh, the plight of kashmiri women uh but i remember when i was there when i got married in 2009 coming from pakistan traveling there and you know having that new experience of body searches and humiliating questions and uh, being uh, being interrogated uh, in a polite and rude manner at the same time uh, in the air, on the airports and um, all my luggage being opened up and uh, all your private things being displayed that you know this is is this yours is this yours and where did you buy this from and you know opening your wallet and oh, okay you have 100 dollar okay who gave this to you and who gave this to you so that kind of thing was very new for a person like me and then some intel people uh, the top intel people uh, asking me very uh, you know 
humiliating questions uh, and uh, and also making uh, me uh, you know as if um, i'm just uh, um, 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 just like a piece of flesh uh, how they would uh, objectify um, so i kind of started getting to know that you know i'm getting into a valley of death into a place where uh, women have uh, received uh, a horrific terrible um, extraordinary titles of half widows half mothers and, and uh, where you have uh, you know the highest ratio of rape as a weapon of war uh, because when we talk about violence um, we, we 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 look at human history and uh, we we have seen uh, unfortunately terrible and uh, you know dreadful features of uh, colossal deaths of uh, of destruction of uh, miseries on uh, subjugated on innocent people around the world wars have not given us anything good like you know i mean apart from uh, maybe sovereignties for for the world but it has left behind a lot of pain uh, a lot of miseries and a lot of innocent lives uh, have uh, you know uh, just uh, been uh, disappeared butchered or um, and and the most vulnerable people in uh, you know um, war stricken areas or in conflict zones sadly are the women and the children and i have uh, experienced it firsthand in the most militarized zone in the world kashmir and i went as just not a politician i just went as a wife uh, with a message of love from uh, a pakistani girl marrying a kashmiri freedom fighter who is following the gandhian path and i'm a painter and artist so i i, I didn't go with any weapons or anything but the kind of mistreatment that i faced or my daughter i mean like um, i i mentioned this uh, in most of my talks that um, um, my baby when she was like a uh, Two years old, uh, how she was uh, body searched and a pamper was thrown, and how she was examined. Trying the in, uh, Indian forces were trying to examine her internally, and the pain that I went through that is sexual harassment, that is violence uh, with a little baby and throwing her milk. And I remember at that time um, when I shared it with my family, um, with my in laws, they were like, "Kisi ko nahi batana. You don't have to tell anybody this. You know, this is like you know, just like a bus chhod. Ye ye yahan pe yehi hota hai." और भी लोगों ने बिकॉज इट्स अ कंजर्वेटिव सोसाइटी तो वेन आई केम बैक टू पाकिस्तान आफ्टर क्रेजी इंसिडेंट्स हैपनिंग विद माई हजबेंड विद आर फैमिली एंड एंड मीटिंग डायरेक्ट विक्टम्स ऑफ रेप विक्टम्स पोस्ट ट्रोमैटिक स्ट्रेस डिजॉर्डर पेशेंट एवरी सेकेंड पर्सन इवन आई गो थ्रू दैट ट्रामा आई वेंट थ्रू ट्रामा इन टू थाउजेंड नाइनटीन आई वॉज गेटिंग पैनिक अटैक्स आई कुडन स्लीप फॉर ऑलमोस्ट अ ईयर and i remember when i read the un secretary general i was shivering when he was in pakistan i could not even talk because i was like i don't know if my husband is dead or alive so that is the kind of uh, feelings emotions that a normal kashmiri woman goes through on a daily basis you have economic hurdles you have legal issues uh, you you have violence you have abuse and and it's not just them uh, doing your body search they're like passing comments at you they're using abusive languages when they're outside the army bunkers and they the glares the stares i call that rape even the uh, the way they stare at the women and the children over there it's it's it's, it's a very difficult um life that a kashmiri goes through uh, and um, what is very painful is that you know uh, a lot of half widows or half mothers i mean uh, you will see them running around uh, you know searching for their loved ones going to army camps going to uh, the courts going to police stations uh, where hardly any uh, case is registered of a rape victim because uh, the state is controlling the indian state uh, and uh, what is a bigger tragedy that i uh, that i see when i uh, when i look at it from a macro level is that um, in history we've seen a lot of humanitarian uh, tragedies around the world uh, but um, it's not very common that you see this dirty practice of violence and uh, and rape uh, as a weapon of war and sexual violence um, it, it's mostly uh, an individual act of revenge but not as a state policy the way we have witnessed in indian illegally occupied jammu and kashmir where it is uh, getting complete patronage state sponsored uh, and um, 
who to go to for justice. I mean, like, you know, um, the courts, the police stations, the army camps, where to go. And if you go around searching for your loved ones or for asking for justice, uh, what will happen to your families? They'll be eliminated or they'll disappear. So in such uh, crucial or abnormal uh, circumstances, a Kashmiri woman is looking after the home, is looking after the children, is suddenly became the breadwinner in the early 90s when all the economic burden fell on a Kashmiri woman, even if she was skilled or not skilled, if she was in a village or in the city, or if she had uh, economic opportunities, uh, she had uh, the facility to go for a job, or if she had the security to go and uh, have a safe education somewhere. So in such uh, an environment, uh, of uh, complete intolerance, humiliation, and domination, uh, instilling uh, fear and that fear psychosis among the public, and not having any male member. I mean, I, I'm I, I'm not the sort of person who's, who, who would call. I, I'm, I'm I wouldn't call myself that I'm weak or a Kashmiri woman weak. But in such a an environment. Just imagine your families, your loved ones, your daughters, your sisters. I mean, uh, uh, even if they're very brave, I mean, there's no male figure and the Indian forces are barging in, fully equipped. I have witnessed many raids late at night when my husband uh, went on hiding um, when um, Modi was elected as a prime minister for the first time in 2014. Uh, this was uh, in August and September. And at that time, Yasin launched a Quit Kashmir campaign. And I was meeting him after a year, and um, I, I, I had no idea that, you know, what's uh, in store, uh, especially during the Modi and the RSS regime. It was a new experience for me. And I remember um, my husband was with me for two, three days, and then he said, um, ah, honey, I'm going, <laughs> I'm disappearing. I was like, what? Where are you going? It was a new experience for me. Coming from Pakistan, I'm not a Kashmiri, Kashmiri, you know, living in an under occupation. So I was like, where are you running off to? I mean, I just came, I got the visa after a lot of struggle. And uh, he's like, I have given a call for quit Kashmir against uh, Modi's narrative of abrogation of Article 370 and 35A. And um, I don't know where I will be, but um, after like 10 days or 15 days, you can see me. And I remember those 10, 15 days were so heavy on me. I, I even forgot that I was missing my husband, you know, uh, because of the night raids. And my, I remember my mother-in-law told me, because it was a very new experience for me. And she said, Beta, you should wear proper clothes, no nighties, and, you know, just cover yourself properly. Anybody can come late at night and, you know, you, you can't even wait for a minute. Till you have to open your bedroom because they search the washroom, the cupboards, this, and where is your husband? And, you know, in a very, in a, in a, in a very, um, what do you call, um, scary manner. They would do that. I was like, I don't know where he is. And then th this was like interrogation going on and on. And um, I remember when I was in um, Ajmer Shri, I'm, I'm giving you a first-hand account because uh, a lot of you are research-based analysts and uh, you were well aware of the ratios, the statistics of over um, 11,000 600 rape victims, but that I, I, I don't agree with the statistics that come forward because uh, there's a lot of underreporting of rape victims, of half widows, half mothers, of widows. Um, either it's because uh, they do not get registered because it's the Indian state, uh, or the fear of getting harassed or killed, or being uh, uh, slapped with draconian laws, or being punished, or because it's a conservative society also. So they don't want to be exposed to the world. So uh, I kind of uh, dared to expose a bit of it, just a bit of it, uh, of what happened with my daughter and with me. Uh, and I, I remember um, I, I took permission from my husband that, you know, I want to share what happened with my sister-in-law when she was only 16 years old. She doesn't have nails on her feet. They, 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 they just... Uh, harassed her so badly when she was just a little teenager uh, and till date i mean she's in her 40s right now and she just can't get over baal bhi nahi unke sir pe you know because of that trauma not that they shaved her head or anything the trauma is so 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 deep that you know um, no matter how much counseling uh, you 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 get uh, it's almost impossible but there's no counseling over there in, in Kashmir and the legal issues that, that almost every Kashmiri family is facing, especially the women, I would say, is 
that if your loved one has disappeared and obviously marked in, uh, landed in an unmarked grave, then how do you uh, legally claim the share as, a heir, as an heir, as a shareholder, especially for a widow or a mother? Is she half mother? Are the children half orphans? Are they born orphans? Are they complete orphans? And in that journey, they have to wait for years and years to get access of the bank accounts of the disappeared person or of their property that gets seized. So this is the way it is. This is the reality of Kashmir. And one of the major reasons why um, I became active um, on the Kashmir issue uh, was because of what happened with my daughter. That was sexual violence. That was harassment. Whatever happened with me, I, I ignored that. Whatever happened with my husband, I was like, okay, he's a leader. I, I, I knew this already that, you know, his, uh, his first home, not second, first home is the jail uh, when I married him. But when it happened with my little child, I was like, oh my God, I think I should just die right now. I am in such a helpless state. And that's when I started researching on international law and humanitarian law. And I started reading about uh, the rights of people in conflict zones. And that's when I realized that one of the most powerful uh, resolutions in the United Nations, which I'm really passionate about, uh, which really motivated me and moved me was 1325. Uh, and there was 1820, which calls for equal participation and focus on women in the peace building processes and acknowledging them and giving them that place on the table to give their opinion, their experience and their suggestions. And then many laws that have come forward after 1325, especially uh, a resolution which was passed in 2008, which is directly linked with today, uh, with this uh, uh, day of violence against women, is that uh, the UN Security Council passed a resolution uh, that uh, rape, or other forms of sexual violence constitute to war crimes, crimes against humanity, or a constitutive act concerning genocide, which is the highest crime in the world, which is the most unforgivable crime in the world. And what is the way forward? Obviously, the way forward is demilitarization, de-weaponization. It, uh, it, it requires uh, abrogation of uh, nullification of all those draconian laws which are giving complete immunity to the predators, to, to the rapists, to the butchers, to the killers, the Indian forces. They are protected by Armed Forces Special Powers Act. You have uh, many other draconian laws uh, that, that protect them. And it is, the, it is a tragedy that the, Indians, uh, the, the elections that take place over there in Indian illegally occupied Jammu and Kashmir after every four to five years, uh, the only thing that they do is they pass draconian laws. And now you have the delimitation, abrogation of Article 370, 35A. Now I don't even have an exact account of what's happening over there. They are not just bulldozing villages. They are burning homes uh, and, you know, uh, kicking people out of their homes, snatching their property documentation, documents, monetization policy, which is seizing bank accounts of everybody, regardless of their uh, widows or half widows or, 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 or orphans or, or their normal family, if they are linked or if they have sentiments towards the freedom. And when we, we, we look at another aspect of this Kashmir issue is uh, there are a series of, uh, you know, uh, massive uh, incidents in the past two decades of uh, of, uh, uh, of of rape uh, massacres such as the Shopia, Handwara, uh, which took place in 2004, Vavosa, uh, Konan Poshpura, you're all well aware of that, Chanpura, I was there during the Chanpura time, and um, the Haran, and, and so many other painful, um, I think um, 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 we've seen uh, rape uh, incidents uh, at a massive scale. And um, Asian Watch and Human Rights Watch uh, said in one of its reports that rape by, uh, on its report on uh, rape in Kashmir, rape by state forces is not privately motivated form of ab abuse, but an abuse of power that implicates public responsibility. So I think the rapist is the Indian state. The killer, of course, and they should be held accountable under international jurisdiction. They should be held accountable in international criminal court. 
especially to persecute the war crimes committed by the Indian um, occupational forces. It is high time that we should follow that path to hold them accountable, the way the Palestinians have done it in the past, and they're still doing it. So we need to learn a lot from them. We, we need to have more expertise on, uh, on not just knowing the law uh, of the land or the law of conflict zones of, of disputed territories, but also taking it forward internationally and claiming our rights. We, we recently had that uh, stock right investigation uh, in which uh, around 2,000 um, cases of war crimes, individual cases uh, have been forwarded. Uh, it's, it's a law firm uh, and they want to take um, first time ever challenge India on the legal front uh, under international jurisdiction in international court. So that is one of the things. The other is to hold India accountable under the Security Council for violation of uh, Geneva Convention 4 and also for uh, demanding um, 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 the chief prosecutor of the International Criminal Court to take individual cases and to punish the perpetrators. And for that matter, we need a lot of, lot of lobbying. We, we need to do a lot of research work and we need to have very strong legal documents. We've, we, the Foreign Office issued a very strong legal document two years back. Uh, it was almost two years back. And then we've witnessed two very strong reports uh, coming from the UN Human Rights Commission and the demands that they've set for India. And just recently, uh, we, we have uh, seen other uh, organizations like Amnesty and others, uh, uh, you know, publishing reports. But practically no step has been taken to stop any of the uh, demographic changes or, or uh, the war crimes that are going on over there. And um, in the end, just... Uh, um, in a nutshell, I would just say that uh, it's it's a uh, it's it's such a complicated situation uh, for the women, and it, and it's so exhausting also at the same time, uh, uh, being under constant trauma and um, have nowhere to go, no 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 stability, and, and uh, there's no conflict pre prevention or or peacekeeping or conflict resolution options for a Kashmiri woman or for uh, for any kind of economic empowerment. Uh, and um, uh, just, uh, I think uh, it was a year back, uh, we, we witnessed that the BJP leaders were like openly, you know, um, claiming that, you know, uh, you can go and hunt around and get those fair Kashmiri women and marry them. And, uh, and you know, nobody will hold you accountable. They, this is like your, uh, like, they're like cattle for you. You can do anything with them. So such kind of harassments and, uh, and challenges for an unarmed and a defenseless nation, and uh, and uh, being uh, facing constant vulnerability and, and continuing with the movement, because th these women are the mothers of the future, and, and they they're carrying it on from one generation to the other. So in the end, uh, I will end it with a few verses of uh, that the war will end, the leaders will shake hands, the old woman will keep waiting for her martyred husband. And those children will wait for the hero father. I don't know who sold our homeland, but I saw who paid the price. Thank you. Thank you, Mary. Uh, I now open the floor for questions. Team and I have a question. Um, Ma'am, um, what, uh, so following up on your uh, discussion and from Ms. Tayaz as well, how, what role do you feel like that the international community in general and the, since Ms. Taya works, uh, is the head of uh, very prestigious NGO. What role do you think NGOs, other NGOs, and the international community can play to help with the situation in IOJK and to further the cause that you are fighting for? Very important. Bring it into public discourse, 
and uh, to to know our rights, the resolutions in favor for the protection of women, uh, especially under the UN mechanism and um, eliminating violence against women, which is obviously an unfinished agenda around the world. As I mentioned, um, it's very important to reinforce uh, 1325, uh, which is a, a very important UN resolution. And uh, its main focus is that it's impossible to have uh, international peace and security around the world if uh, women and girls are not safe, they're not empowered, and uh, there's no gender equality. For that, I think we need more and more uh, female activists coming forward. We need uh, female representation, um, in all walks of life, uh, in human rights activists, NGOs, and uh, and also um, I think it's very important to educate the men folk also uh, to respect women. And uh, when it uh, when when you, when you focus on a conflict zone, the challenges are very different from a normal nation, you know, from a, a country where um, I think uh, uh, individual acts can take place around the world uh, of harassment. But here it's a collective; it's a, it's 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 protected by the state. There are laws that are protecting them. So uh, how to get those laws abolished? how to get those people, those rapists or those aggressors or harassers or molesters or whatever killers uh, uh, accountable uh, under the, the framework of international law. And then there's another um, uh, very powerful and strong uh, resolution, uh, 1820 and then 1888, 1889 and 2106. And ma the main focus is uh, to take note of the critical uh, contributions of the civil society where you talked about NGOs, including women organizations to conflict resolutions, resolutions and peace building, importance of sustained consultation and dialogue between women and national and international decision makers. And I remember when I got uh, very active on the Kashmir front, uh, I, I, I realized that very few women were coming forward. I mean, they, 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 we knew them as victims, but no one would come out directly to, you know, uh, speak up about it. And I remember I did my, um, uh, the first ever, I think, tribute uh, that was paid in Pakistan to uh, Asya and Rabi Saiba was done by me because I was like, um, nobody really, you know, knew about her um, entire life, her struggle. And I think in the same manner, we have Praveen Ahangar, who's leading uh, the, the cause of disappeared persons. Uh, in Kashmir, and we have a lot of strong women that need to be recognized, and we need to have a more, um, I think, uh, uh, collective effort. Uh, we we need to uh, be uh, making joint efforts. Uh, especially, I think it's 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 a it's a major responsibility on empowered women around the world. Empowered women who have career or voice, they should speak up for the most vulnerable and suppressed women on the planet. And I think the most vulnerable women right now, I think, present in the world, even more than the Palestinian women, because we don't have any defense system. I mean, we're completely unarmed. I mean, almost zero uh, militancy or armed struggle. And uh, it's, it's, it's a 99.999% it's peaceful struggle. And who's leading? Who has the weight of, you know, the economic burden? It's falling upon the women. I mean, it's, 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 it's a heavy toll. I mean, I, I remember my mother-in-law, I mean, this in 2019, when a, 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 two days before the nuclear codes were exchanged on 27th of February, I mean, she's, she's over 80 and um, she has suffered throughout her life and uh, how they raided our home. She was all alone and they beat her up and, you know, they took away our wedding album and tearing. It's so painful, like elderly women are also suffering, young little girls, uh, from Kanan Poshpura till now. And, and sexual harassment is not just of uh, women, of little girls, little children, uh, and even men, boys. So it's, it's, it's uh, this violence, this, this cycle is just like, it's a spiral. And uh, documentation and more and more female uh, being inducted in human rights and uh, organizations advocating for us. We need more, stronger advocacy internationally. Hmm. Okay. Uh, my question is uh, to Ms. Uh, 
common thread in your talk men and women and both are you know uh, you know, because of economic reasons, like, uh, economic base of society ki social base ko reflect karti hai. But do you think that we need an overhaul of the economic system to solve the social system? Uh, I think the solution is not really um, patchwork kar sakte hai, but if we really want to fix the system, we might need an overhaul of the entire system, entire capitalist system. So this is my question. पहले मैं एक चीज को क्लेरिफाई कर देखिए हम लोगों ने मैंने खुद वॉलंटरीली काम किया विद एन ऑर्गेनाइजेशन फॉर 2 इयर्स जहां हम बेटर्ड औरतों के साथ काम करते थे तो उनको काउंसलिंग साइकोलॉजिकल सपोर्ट पेरिफेरल्स और लीगल सपोर्ट बिलीव मी इकोनॉमिक्स हैज नथिंग टू डू विद वायलेंस अगेंस्ट वुमेन सेक्रेटरीज की बीवियां जो बहुत पीएचडी डॉक्टर्स की बीवियां जो खुद पीएचडी डॉक्टर्स हैं और समटाइम्स अपने मियां से ज्यादा कमा रही हैं ये जो है ना वायलेंस का थ्रेड और लिंकेज इट इज नथिंग टू डू विद क्लास कास्ट रिचेस और बीइंग पुअर in rural areas or cross cuts you know aur uski wajah ye hai aur iski economic reasons kam hai main iski jo hai na wo social aur jo maine pehle baat ki maine badi mukhtasar baat ki thi ki ye hum society construct karti hai magar society ke andar aap dekhiye sorry actors kaun kaun hai मसलन मैं हमारे पूरे लिटरेचर में औरत को कैसे रिप्रेजेंट किया जाता है मर्द को कैसे रिप्रेजेंट किया जाता है आज मैं मतलब हो सकता है आप में से कुछ लोग देखते हो ड्रॉ में तो मैं मर्दों से पूछना चाहती हूं कि भई आप लोग प्रोटेस्ट नहीं करते आ, सारे ड्रामों में मर्द कानों का कच्चा बेवकूफ अकल का अंधा और रस्ते में चलते किसी ने कुछ कह दिया उन्हें डंडा चुप यू आर नॉट लाइक दैट मगर जो हम अपने बच्चों को सिखा रहे हैं मीडिया से और आपको मैं एक मिसाल देती हूँ हमारा एक छोटा कजन इन हिस्स टीन एज उसको एक लड़की पसंद आ गई उसके पीछे 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 भाई उन्होंने धमकियां दी भाइयों ने कहा कि अब अगर तुम तुम मुझे फोन करके कहा अब वो हमें नजर आया तो हमने पिस्तौले तैयार की हुई अब वो मेरे पंद्रह बार समझाने से माना नहीं था तो पैर फोर्स मैंने उसके बाप को बताया बाप ने उसको यू नो फिजिकल वायलेंस कुटा छुट्टा उसको कहा खबरदार तो कई उस वक्त तो मैं भी डर गई फिर कई महीने बाद उससे मैंने पूछा मैंने कहा तुम्हें हुआ क्या था उस लड़की ने कहा आई एम नॉट इंटरेस्टेड उसकी फैमिली ने कहा आई एम नॉट इंटरेस्टेड जवाब बड़ा कमाल का था एंड दिस बॉय वॉज सेवेंटीन उसने कहा बाजी आ, सारी फिल्मों में ऐसे ही होता है कि वो पीछे पीते रहते हैं लड़कियों के वो पहले दस बार ना करती फिर वो मान जाती है तो मैंने कहा ये मान जाएगी रूप दिस इज हाउ मेन आर प्रोजेक्टेड इन द मीडिया और मत तो बिल्कुल इतना से हम करते हैं एनालिसिस औरतों के पॉइंट ऑफ व्यू से कि भाई अगर देखिए हमने एक ईसी सी डी अर्ली चाइल्डहुड केयर एंड एजुकेशन और आपको पता है पहले पांच साल आर वेरी वेरी फॉर्मेटिव जो बच्चे ने बनना है वो बन जाता है उन पांच साल में ये अर्ली चाइल्डहुड केयर का एक मैन्यूल हमने देखा उसमें हर जो एक्सरसाइज बच्चे के साथ है वो रिपीट करते हैं ना तीन चार दिन रिपीट करते हैं चालीस एक्सरसाइजेस थी उसमें तेरा में बाप गुस्से में था तेरा एक्सरसाइजेस में बाप गुस्से में था अब अगर आपने आ, बाप को तो रिलेशनशिप कहा रहा बच्चे का और बाप का आपने तो वहीं पे उसको खत्म कर दिया तो ये बहुत सी चीजें रोल मॉडल 
अच्छा बाप कैसा होता है उसका रोल मॉडल लिटरेचर में भी मिल जाएगा ड्रामा में तो आजकल कम ही मिलता है कोई रेयर ही अच्छा फादर वो भी उसको भी कानों का कच्चा ही दिखाते हैं मगर ये कि आपको अच्छा बेटा अच्छे भाई की कुछ कैरेक्टरिस्टिक्स मिलेंगी कहीं लिटरेचर में अच्छे शोहर का कोई जिक्र नहीं है और जितना जिक्र है वो नेगेटिव उसमें है तो एग्जैक्टली exactly. और ये वायलेंस कहाँ से आती है आपने वो रेप की बात की 1820 में कितना उसको वो किया फिर उसके बहन भाई जो बाद में आए एटी एट एटी नाइन वगैरह कितना उसको डिटेल में आगे किया है मगर रेप में क्यों ये स्टेट किया तो मतलब ये स्टेट ने मगर इंडिविजुअल्स ने जितने वहां पे अब ये जितनी खुदकुशियां हुई इंडियन सोल्जर्स की आखिर कहीं तो वो उत्तर होगा कि ये आपकी बॉडी औरत की बॉडी इस्तेमाल हुई एक नेशन को जलील करने के लिए और टूल उसके लिए बना मर्द की बॉडी ये क्या कंट्रोल है भाई इसको किसने मना करना है इसको हमने मना करना है थ्रू जैसे आपने उन्होंने लीगल लिटरेसी की बात की थी लीगल लिटरेसी एक रिस्पॉन्सिव मैकेनिज्म है मगर वो प्रिवेंटिव मैकेनिज्म भी हो सकता है अगर सबको ये पता हो जब हम यूनिवर्सिटी स्टूडेंट्स के साथ काम करते हैं ना तो उनको हम कहते हैं पांच मिनट दो मिनट के लिए आंखें बंद करो और इमेजिन करो कि आज पाकिस्तान के सारे मर्द ये फैसला कर लें कि हमने औरत की तरफ दोबारा नहीं देखना नजर पड़ गई दोबारा नहीं देखना तो आपकी जिंदगी में क्या असर पड़ेगा और ये हुक्म है ना मैं उसको रिलीजन से जोड़ना नहीं चाहती मगर ये हुक्म है तो जो है क्या फर्क पड़ेगा आपकी जिंदगी में उनके लिए बड़ा दुश्वार होता है इमेजिन करना मगर उसके बाद जब वो खुलते हैं तो वो कहते हैं वाह भाई वाह मुझे तो बिल देने नहीं जाना पड़ेगा मेरी बहन जाके दे आएगी रोज मुझे हर एतवार को आधा मेरा मार्केट में गुजरता है दिन कि ये बहन को फलानी जगह ले जाओ मार्केट से सब्जियां ले आओ मैं तो इतना थक जाता हूँ मैं दफ्तर आके आराम करता हूँ मंडे को इतना ज्यादा काम होता है ये मेरे ऊपर से बोझ हट जाएगा तो ये जो है ना देखिए बेसिकली सोशल कॉन्स्ट्रक्ट है और सोशल कॉन्स्ट्रक्ट है अगर आप थोड़ा खुद भी अपने आप को एनालाइज करने लगे ज्यादातर मर्द हमारे साथ औरतों के साथ खुल के बात नहीं करते आपस में भी खुल के बात नहीं करते क्योंकि उनको सिखाया जाता है कि जो ही तुमने आंख में आंसू आया यू आर नो मोर मैन तो उन्होंने उस फियर से कि मेरी एक्सेप्टेंस रहे एज अ मैन वो अपने जज्बात से बहुत डिस्टेंस अपने आप को कर लेते हैं उनको करना पड़ता है मगर जब खुल जाए थोड़ा सा बात करें तो बहुत से मर्द हमें कहते हैं वी ऑलवेज फेल्ट लाइक अ फेलियर हमें कभी नहीं लगा कि हम अपनी फैमिली की एक्सपेक्टेशन पे हम अपने पीयर ग्रुप की एक्सपेक्टेशन पे पूरे उतरे हैं तो वो जो है ना एक इन एडिक्वेसी की एक्सेप्टेंस की ख्वाहिश अप्रूवल की ख्वाहिश और इन एडिक्वेसी की फीलिंग अगर मैंने ऐसे बिहेव नहीं किया तो ये सारी उम्र के लिए मेरे ऊपर ये लग जाएगा और फिर आपको पता है मर्द कैसे करते हैं ना वो एक लेबल लगा लेते हैं वो उसके साथ उसकी रहती उम्र तक चाहे वो कल को कमिश्नर बन जाए प्रेसिडेंट बन जाए वो कहेंगे ऐसा होता था ये बचपन में इसे तो वो जो गुजरता था वो इसको लात मार के चला जाता था वॉकिंग अवे फ्रॉम वायलेंट सिचुएशन नहीं कर सकते उनसे बात करें क्यों मारा इवेंचुअली पता ये चलता है कि फलाने को फलाने थप्पड़ क्यों मारा वो मेरी गर्लफ्रेंड को उसने ये बात की अब ये मेरी कहा से आ गया मतलब हाउ कैन यू प्रोसेस एन अदर ह्यूमन बींग और उसका आप अपने ऊपर मतलब उसके एक्शन की जिम्मेदारी अपने पर बंदा है खुदा तुम्हारी अपनी जिंदगी तुम्हारे अपने एक्शन हैं मसलन कहते हैं 
اس نے مجھے بڑا اریٹیٹ کیا تو میں نے اس کو جوتی کٹوا دی بھائی تم نے اپنا سر اس کو میں نے اینٹ مار دی اپنا سر دیوار میں کیوں نہ مارا یو نو غصہ تمہیں چڑھا تھا نا تو اپنا سر ٹیکنگ ریسپانسبلٹی فار یور ایکشن یو کوڈ ہیو واکڈ اوے وائی ڈینٹ یو واک اوے کیونکہ اس سے میری مردانگی پہ ہر آتا ہے میں چلا جاؤں دروازہ توڑ دو کسی کو توڑنا ہے کچھ توڑنا ہے دروازہ توڑ دو بس توڑ دو اپنا سر پاڑ لو اور اب امن یہ چوائسز ہیں جو پھر ہم کرتے ہیں سوسائٹی نے سکھا دیا بٹ دین دیر آر انڈیویجل چوائسز تو یہ لمبا جواب اب تو باڈی شیمنگ بھی بہت آ گیا ہے اب تو سوشل میڈیا پہ جو باڈی شیمنگ کرتے ہیں مختصر سوال اور یہ مردوں کی ہراسمنٹ ہے مردوں کی بچپن سے چلتی ہے یہ تین کیوں ہے یہ موٹا کیوں نہیں اس لیے تو مکا نہیں مار سکتا رائٹ فرام دا بیگ نہیں مگر اتنا لمبا جواب آپ کے مختصر سوال کا یہ ہے کہ اکانومی سے اس کا کوئی تعلق نہیں دس از سوشل کانسٹریکٹ تھینک یو تھینک یو سو مچ میڈم بلخیز میں نے بہت انسپائریشن ڈرا کی ہے آپ کی جو بہت ہی فرینک اور کینڈیڈ ٹاک تھی میں ایک ایک منٹ مجھے لو کیجیے ایک آبزرویشن کرنا چاہ رہا ہوں میں یہ حقیقت ہے کہ عورت کے خلاف تشدد ہائیلی کنڈیمیبل ہے اور ہونا بھی چاہیے لیکن میں ایک بات تھوڑا سا کہنا چاہوں چونکہ آپ نے بہت خوبصورت بات کی کہ سوسائٹی سے اس کا بڑا تعلق ہے کہ سوسائٹی کس طریقے سے سوچتی ہے کیا ان کو ٹیبوز دیے گئے ہیں کیا ان کو انڈاکٹریٹ کیا گیا ہے اس میں بریفلی کچھ ایسا ہے کہ جو انڈاکٹرینیشن ہے وہ یہ ہے کہ اللہ نے جب یہ تخلیق کائنات بھی ہوئی تو اللہ نے مرد کو پیدا کیا آدم پیدا ہوئے ہوا کے پیدا ہونے کا کہیں کوئی کسی بھی ڈکٹم میں کہیں کچھ تصور نہیں ملتا آدم کی فصلی سے ہوا کو پیدا کیا گیا تو اس لیے عورت جو زن نازک ہے اور وہ سیکنڈری سٹیٹس اس کو شروع سے ہی دے دیا گیا اور یہ مینٹیلٹی میں سوسائٹی میں چلی جائے گی یہ بات Having said that, اس کا ایشو یہ ہے اسی لیے ہماری سوسائٹی میں جب عورت کو ٹیٹ کیا تو عورت کو حسن سے اور نزاکت سے تعبیر کیا جاتا ہے جبکہ مرد کو کتنا پھرتیلا ہے کتنے جگاڑ کر سکتا ہے اور کتنے انیشیٹو لے سکتا ہے اس سے یہ بات بالکل آپ کے انسپیشن میں نہیں میں نے ڈرا کی ہے اور یہ بھی حقیقت ہے کہ پہلا جو وکٹم زمانے میں ہے وہ بھی بےچارا مرد ہی ہے سب سے پہلے مرد پٹا ایک مرد نے دوسرے مرد کو مارا حابل نے قابل کو مارا تو وائلنس جو دنیا میں شروع ہے جینڈر وہ کچھ اس طریقے سے لیکن اب ہم نے جہاں اتنی ساری بات کی میں ایک بات یہ کہنا چاہوں گا کہ چونکہ آپ نے اسٹرکچر کی بات کی وائلنس اسٹرکچرل ہے میڈم اور اسٹرکچرل اس طریقے یہ نہیں کہ صرف لاس سے یا اکنامک امپاورمنٹ وغیرہ سے صرف ہاتھ سے مارنا ہی وائلنس نہیں ہے بلکہ انسٹیٹیوشنل وائلنس اس طریقے سے ہے کہ ہمارے یہاں کاری کی بات ہوتی ہے اور اسی طریقے سے قرآن سے شادی کرا دی جاتی ہے سپرسٹیشن شادی کرا دی جاتی ہے یہاں تک کہ بعض معاشرے میں ہمارے یہاں شاید ہمارے یہاں پاکستان میں بھی ہے میں ہندوستان کی بات نہیں کروں گا جو کہ میڈم بہت زیادہ کوالیفائڈ اس پہ بات کرنے کے لیے سپرسٹیشن میری ایسی ہے کہ درخت سے بھی شادی کرا دی جاتی ہے اور کتے سے بھی شادی کرا دی جاتی ہے تو یہ سپر کیونکہ بیسیکلی یہ یہ یہی یہ 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 تسلیم ہے عورت کی جس کی وجہ سے اس کو امپاور نہیں کیا گیا اور معاشرے نے اس کو اسی طریقے سے دیکھا تو جہاں ہم یہ اوور آل بات کریں گے وہاں ہمیں یہ بھی ذہن میں رکھنا پڑے گا کہ جو اسٹرکچرل ٹیبوز ہیں جو انڈاکٹریشن کی وجہ سے ہیں جو لٹریچر کی وجہ سے ہیں اور جو سوسائٹی کی وجہ سے ہیں یہ اوور آل ہے جب تک ان کو ایلیمنیٹ نہیں کیا جائے گا عورت ہمیشہ وکٹم ہی رہے گی تھینک یو سو مچ صرف یہ کہنا چاہتی ہوں کہ آپ سے میں اس پوائنٹ پہ ڈیفینیٹلی ایگری کرتی ہوں کہ یہ اسٹرکچرل ہے اور سوشل کانسٹرکٹ ہے اور اچھی آپ نے اس کی مثالیں دی کہ جب جب اس طرح کی شادی کی جاتی ہے مقصد کیا جائیداد پہ قبضہ کر رہا ہم کیوں حدود کے خلاف لڑتے رہے اور آج تک لڑ رہے ہیں اور ایون جب بے نظیر بھٹو کی ٹو تھرڈ میجورٹی والی گورنمنٹ تھی اس سے بھی ہم کہہ کہہ کے مر گئے اور اس نے جرت نہیں کی اس کو ریپیل کرنے کی کیونکہ یہ ایبیوز کا ایک طریقہ ہے آپ کو مجھے آپ کی زمین پسند آ گئی میں پاور فلو مار دوں آپ کو میں نے کاری کیوں کرتے ہیں آپ کی زمین میں نے وہ لڑکا آپ کو بھی مار دیا اپنے گھر کی بھی ایک عورت کو جس کا کل کو ہیریٹیج میں انہیریٹنس میں حصہ ہوتا اس کو بھی میں نے مار دیا 
तो मुझे तो डबल फायदा हो गया ना दूध के अंदर ज्यादातर से ना ऑर्डिनेंस में ज्यादातर खातन जिनसे हमारी और ये मेहरबानी है उन मौलवियों को की भी जिन्होंने ओवर नाइट बगैर डिस्कशन के तीन दिन में वो ले आए और उस उस पे साइन भी हो गए और वो इशू भी हो गया और कभी आज तक उसको कुछ नहीं हो सका मगर जमीन के लिए प्रॉपर्टी बचाने के लिए जितनी आपने ये सारी बातें की वनी स्वरा कारी ये इसके पीछे मटेरियल मोटिवेशन है और मटेरियल आपके पास होना जितने पैसे आपके पास ज्यादा होंगे आप मर्द की सक्सेस किस चीज से रिले किस चीज से देखते हैं लोग बड़ा पैसे वाला है जी उसके पास तो पचेरो है उसके पास तो पराडो है वो तो हर चीज खरीद सकता है उससे इक्वेट करते हैं ना सक्सेस को बिल्कुल अगर रोटी पूरी नहीं घर की कर सक रहा तो हर एक उसके ऊपर उसकी दो कोड़े की इज्जत हो जाएगी तो ये जो हमने बना ली हुई है चीजें इसकी वजह से जो हम अक्सर करते हैं और जो रिकमेंडेशन भी होगी मेरी वो ये है कि एक एनालिसिस मीडिया का कर लें चूंकि आप आ, वो है रिसर्च ऑर्गेनाइजेशन है किताबों का भी कर लें कि बच्चे को बाप से दूर क्यों किया जाता है और कितनी बार किया जाता है कितनी बार अब ड्रामो में देखिए हर वक्त और अच्छा प्यारी उम्र अखबार पढ़ रहा मतलब वाई इज दिस एक हमने एनालिसिस किया था आई सेंड द बुक टू यू इसका टीवी के ऊपर मैस्कुलिनिटीज का एक्सप्रेशन ऑफ मैस्कुलिनिटीज इन टीवी प्रोग्राम्स तो बहुत इंटरेस्टिंग उसमें से चीजें निकली अब देखें लिबास में फॉर एग्जाम्पल जिसने जिसने फॉर्मली कहीं जाना है वो पेंट शर्ट पहन के जाएगा वरना उसको गेट से पीएन गुजरने भी नहीं देगा ये कहाँ से चीजें आई और कहीं ना कहीं से हमने सीखी और उसी को हम आगे सिखाते हैं किस तरह से ये सारी चीजें फिर हौले हौले पर पैचुएट होती जाती हैं आपने शायरी की बात की Uh, मुझे जो साइंस थोड़ी सी मुख्तलिफ बात करती है साइंस ये कहती है औरत का स्टेमिना ज्यादा है फिजिकली उसके दिमाग में और उसके दिल में फासला ज्यादा बनस्पत मर्द के तो मर्द को हार्ट अटैक जल्दी होता है अब उसको आप कमजोरी ख्याल करें कि मर्द कमजोर है और औरत स्ट्रांग है वो इंटरप्रिटेशन की बात है एंड एवरी वन इज फ्री टू इंटरप्रेट इट विच एवर वे पीपल वॉन्ट तो ये जो है ना तस्वर स्ट्रेंथ क्या है कमजोरी मेरे लिए स्ट्रेंथ ऑफ कैरेक्टर ये है कि आपसे कोई लड़ रहा है तो आप परे चले जाए लीव दी आर्ग्यूमेंट जिसका कोई वो नहीं है तो ये कौन सिखाएगा हम तो जब स्कूल में सॉरी टू इंटरप्ट यू क्योंकि ये मैं अपना पर्सनल एक्सपीरियंस बताती हूँ माई फादर डायड इन टू और हम लोग बिल्कुल जिस तरह घर का माहौल पापा वाज अ प्रोफेसर माय मदर वाज इन पॉलिटिक्स बड़ा सेफ सिक्योर तो उसके फौरन बाद कोर्ट केसेस शुरू हो गए हमारे माय मदर वाज अ पॉलिटिशियन मास्टर्स इन पॉलिटिकल साइंस और आई वाज डूइंग माय ओ लेवल्स तो उसमें ये मैंने देखा कि बिल्कुल ही ऑफ गार्ड जिससे आप कोर्ट्स में चले जाते हैं आज भी मैं कोर्ट्स में थी तो मुझे ये रियलाइज हुआ एक तो रिलेशनशिप्स की जो आप बात करी है और जो आपने भी बात की है कि इकोनॉमिक इशूज है क्या क्यों नहीं ओपन डिबेट्स कराई जाती हैं एजुकेशनल इंस्टीट्यूट्स के अंदर हमारे स्पेशली uh, यूनिवर्सिटी लेवल पे एक ऐसा कोई सब्जेक्ट जो मैंडेटरी कर दें कि वो हम जब निकले यूनिवर्सिटी से हमारे पास एक डिग्री ना हो बल्कि बाहर तो हर तरह के लोग हैं और हमने किस तरह उनसे डील करना है और हम कॉन्फिडेंस तो होता ही नहीं है लड़कियों के अंदर बहुत मुश्किल से आके वो आती है कि फिर हेरासमेंट शुरू हो जाती है उनको वो कॉन्फिडेंस अब एक्सेप्शनल माहौल था हमारे घर का वरना ऐसे होता नहीं है द वे माई मदर सपोर्टेड मी कोई माँ नहीं अपनी बेटी को आग के दरिया में फेंकेगी वो भी यासिन मलिक की वाई जो थर्ड डिग्री टॉर्चर जिसका टेस्ट भी आ गया अम्मी के सामने के इसमें से बच्चा भी नहीं होगा शी लुक एट द मोटिवेशन दैट माई डॉटर लाइक सेम वी लाइक द मूवमेंट और इनशाला दिस इज हम लाइफ के अंदर सिर्फ एक ही गोल नहीं होता कि बच्चे हो या एक सिक्योर एक कॉज भी होती है बट वो मेरा केस रेयर था दैट आई हैड एन एक्सेप्शनली स्ट्रॉन्ग मदर बट नॉर्मली मैंने देखा है लीगल कुछ भी हमें नहीं पता 
हमें अपनी लीगल राइट बेसिक नहीं पता एक लड़की एक लड़के को नहीं पता कि कल को यूनिवर्सिटी से वो निकल रहा है उसने जो शादी करनी है उसको निकाहनामे का नहीं पता राइट ऑफ डिवोर्स का पहले से नहीं बताया या वायलेंस के बारे में लड़कों को बताए गालियां मत दो वुमन इज नॉट योर प्रॉपर्टी लड़की के लिए भी अलॉट ऑफ वुमेन आर ऑल्सो इन्वॉल्व इन प्रोवोकिंग मैन आई एम सॉरी टू से क्योंकि हमारी सोसाइटी में बताई हुई ये चीजें बस uh, इस्लाम के बारे में बताया मजहब में येस yes, नो no, बट उसके अलावा जो ह्यूमन साइंसेज हैं लोगों के साथ इंटरेक्शन है उसके बारे में हम लोगों को जीरो पता होता है हम खुद ही धक्के खाते हैं देन वी लर्न तो आई थिंक वी नीड टू मेक सम काइंड ऑफ वर्कशॉप मेकेनिज्म और सम कोर्सेज वे यू कैन गाइड अस a person like you such things should be you know um, put into the system that we pick them up at an impressionable age the right things acha sun secretariat ne ek initiative shuru kiya hua hai isme jispe wo life skills ka ek pura unhone course banaya hai which has also been approved to jo uh, text matlab eventually we hope ke textbooks mein changes aa jayengi uh, schoolon mein और ये चीजें पहले हुआ करती थी आ, ये जो कैरेक्टर बिल्डिंग की चीजें हैं जिसकी तरफ आपने कि कैरेक्टर बिल्डिंग शुड बी द की जो कि अब पहले होता था स्कूलों में और जो अब गायब हो गया हुआ है और आई रिमेम्बर जया साहब जब आए थे तो उनकी मेहरबानी से वो काफी सेक्शन रिप्रोडक्टिव हेल्थ के खत्म कर दिए ये जो है इसके खत्म कर दिए हाइजीन uh, की एक हमारी हमारे बचपन में किताब होती थी वो भी खत्म कर दी वगैरह वगैरह होपफुली ये दोबारा आएंगे मगर इपरी से ये तो है कि आप इस पर मजीद रिसर्च करके चूंकि आपका मैंडेट ये है और आप इन्फ्लुएंस कर सकते हैं uh, देखिए uh, ये बड़ी आपको अजीब लगेगी शायद गवर्नमेंट के दफ्तर में बैठ के ऐसी बात करना अच्छा भी है या नहीं मगर एक मिसाल मैं आपको इम्पैक्ट की देना चाहती हूँ ये वहां बैठे हुए थे पैट और पीटीआई वाले इतफाक से मैं वहां से करीब रहती हूँ तो मुझे उनकी आवाज आती रहती थी यकीन करें कि उन तीन साढ़े तीन महीनों में जितनी ह्यूमन राइट्स की और रेस्पॉन्सिबिलिटीज उन्होंने सिखा दी इन लोगों को मेरे जैसी दस हजार एक्टिविस्ट और तीस साल काम करने के बाद भी कम्युनिटी तक वो नहीं पहुंच सकती थी तो एनजीओ का रोल है इम्पोर्टेंट मॉडल बना के देने का मगर ये कभी ना ख्याल करें कि जो स्टेट की आ, स्टेट का सिस्टम है और जो स्टेट की पावर है एनजीओ हम कभी उसके मुकाबले में नहीं कर सकते बिल्कुल वी कैन डिवेलप मॉडल्स प्रेजेंटेड टू द गवर्नमेंट and in this case presented to ipri mm-hmm. aur aap usko aage le jaake aur uh, policy influence kare uh, aapki suni jati hai to ye jo hai na jo recommendations yahan se bhi aa rahi hain unme research ki to bahut badi ye baat hai ki kaise humne isko change karna hai media ko kaise change karna hai media ek level se nikal ke dusre pe chala gaya har drama dekhen सास बहू लड़ रही हैं सास से हैं पहले वो इंडियन में होती थी तो हम इंडियन टीवी नहीं देखते थे अब पाकिस्तानी ड्रामे वैसे के वैसे अजीब वो गरीब और मर्दों के रोल्स भी अजीब वो गरीब ये अगर करके कोई बंदा टीवी के लोगों को प्रेजेंट कर दे एजुकेशन डिपार्टमेंट को प्रेजेंट कर दे कि इन चीजों के अगेंस्ट आपको मैसेजिंग करनी है क्योंकि स्कूल से बच्चे बहुत सी आठ घंटे तो स्कूल में है yes. घर से इतना नहीं सीखते जितना स्कूल से सीखते हैं तो ये बहुत बड़ी और पुराने जमाने में फिर टीचर्स का रोल पुराने जमाने में हमारे टीचर्स अः एक एक चीज सिखाते थे शुक्र अफ दरगुजर अः जो है माँ बाप की बात माननी क्या क्या करना है क्या क्या जिंदगी में नहीं करना सच बोलना धोखे से बचना वगैरह अब तो वो कुछ किताब पढ़ा दी उसमें से आप पास हो गए तो क्वालिटी ऑफ लर्निंग रिसर्च करके पता चले तो उसमें फिर क्वालिटी ऑफ लर्निंग जो टीचर्स ट्रेनिंग के वो हैं इंस्टीट्यूट वहां पे इनपुट दी जा सकती है वगैरह वगैरह थैंक यू यू
Wonderful, wonderful. I want to become your student. Mm -hmm. Uh, thank you very much, both of you, for um, such a wonderful talk on, on a very important topic. Um, I would like to just uh, point out that Quran में जब जब भी जिक्र आया तो वो मर्द और औरत का साथ साथ आया है कि नेक मर्द और नेक औरत परहेजगार मर्द और परहेजगार औरत so uh, I think uski thodi si dissemination society mein shayad kam hai aur wo hum yahi sochte hain ki bas wo mard hi mard hai aur itna hi hai lekin wo mentioned hai at least uh, textbook mein mentioned hai aage pahunchi hai ya nahi wo alag baat hai to um uh mera question jo tha wo um ye tha ki abhi sari baat ye sunke sari talk sunke mujhe jo samajh mein aa rahi hai baat wo ye ki problem society ka hai ek structural problem hai uh, violence against women but society banti kisse hai society to mard aur aurat dono se banti hai aur 100 million plus women in pakistan more than men to wo ek bigger part hai society ka to wo jo education ghar mein mil rahi hai wo jo ek mard de raha hai aur jo ek aurat de rahi hai ek maa de rahi hai aur ek baap de raha hai wo education hi us society ko phir aage jaake in a larger sense society banati hai to us level pe uh, mere khayal se galtiyan मर्द और औरत दोनों से होती हैं और इसको कैसे सही किया जाए कि आगे जाके सोसाइटी फिर बेहतर बने थैंक यू अच्छा इतनी आपने अला बात की है ना आई इट रियली द इनपुट फ्रॉम यू वेरी क्रिटिकल आपकी भी बाकी ये जो है ना आ, किस तरह से औरत का रोल कैसे सोसाइटी ने डिफाइन कर दिया ट्रांसफरेंस ऑफ कल्चर आपको पता है लाहौर में वो जो लड़की दस्तक में आ, मारी गई चेंबर ऑफ कॉमर्स का चेयर फिर बाद में उसका बाप बना पिशावर में माँ ने करवाया माँ ने सात बंदे आ, वो शूटर्स गए हुए थे माँ ने बेटी को आइडेंटिफाई किया और शूटर्स ने उसको मारा अच्छा क्यों माँ ने किया इसलिए कि उसके ऊपर उंगली उठती है जब बेटा कुछ गलत करे और बेटी कुछ गलत करे तो सबसे पहली उंगली माँ पे उठती है और उसकी अपनी इनसिक्योरिटी वी डोंट नो कि उसको ये कहा हो कि तुम्हें तलाक दे देंगे तुम्हारे खानदान को मार देंगे मतलब जो वहां एक लॉयर के दफ्तर में गोलियां चला सकते हैं शेताज को उठा के वहां से ले गए वगैरह वगैरह वो कितने पावरफुल नहीं होंगे मगर एक मैं और बिल्कुल आपकी बात ठीक है कि घर से तरबियत शुरू होती है अब घर में एंड इट्स अ वाइडर क्वेश्चन घर में तरबियत माँ कर रही है ज्यादातर बापों को भी करनी चाहिए उनको हम इक्वली आपने का जिम्मेदार हैं और मैं एग्री करती हूँ मगर देखिए मैं आपको अपनी माँ की मिसाल देती हूँ उनकी अच्छा उन्होंने पांचवी तक पढ़ा गांव में रहती थी उन्होंने पांचवी तक पढ़ा मेरे नाना उनको ले गए अपने साथ वो कहीं हेडमास्टर थे किसी स्कूल के उन्होंने कहा यहाँ रह के पढ़ लेगी जब वो वापस आती थी उनकी अपनी सहेलियों के साथ बातचीत और वो कम हो गई तो शी रिफ्यूज टू गो अब उन्होंने क्या सीखा है शी एज हैड नो एक्सपोजर शी हैज नॉट रेड एनीथिंग कोई उन्होंने अखबार नहीं पढ़ा उनको कहीं ट्रेवल नहीं कराया गया ऑन दी अदर हैंड जो उनके भाई हैं मेरे मामू डे वन गलियों में मारा पीटा सोशल स्किल सीखी नहीं सीखी अब जिंदगी में स्ट्रेटजीज बनाना सीख लिया सर्वाइवल की सारी चीजें उन्होंने सीख ली मेरी माँ के पास रोल मॉडल है उसकी माँ Who is totally illiterate, जिनको कभी किसी ने कुरान शरीफ के अलावा बगैर तर्जमे के कुरान शरीफ के अलावा कुछ और नहीं सिखाया उनकी रोल मॉडल है उनकी माँ तो जिस खातून से आप तो कर रहे हैं कि इसने आप बड़ी खुशी से हम कहते हैं ना माँ की गोद पहला स्कूल है वो गोद को कैपेसिटेट कुछ किया या नहीं किया उसको कुछ सिखाया या नहीं सिखाया वो कहा से लाएगी ये चीजें कहा से लाएगी नहीं लाएगी ना 
क्योंकि उसकी कैपेसिटी इतनी है ही नहीं तो जब हम इक्वल अपॉर्चुनिटी टू एजुकेशन टू हेल्थ टू ऑल अदर राइट बात करते हैं आपने कितनी वो बात की मसावी हकूक की और मसावी जिम्मेदारियों की तो जब हम उसकी बात करते हैं तो उसका मतलब ये है कि जिसने फिर अगली नस्ल को आगे लेके जाना है उसकी एजुकेशन पे ज्यादा तवज्जो होनी चाहिए बनस्पत मर्दों के अगर इसी सिस्टम में हम रहते हैं मर्द ने तो सिर्फ कमाना है ना दफ्तर में जाके कुकिया सॉरी मतलब पढ़ना पढ़ना भी है डिसीजन भी करने हैं मगर ये तो जिसने अगली नस्ल को परवान चढ़ाने उसको आप डबल पढ़ाए उसको ज्यादा मौके दें ताकि वो एक ओपन करे दर अपॉर्चुनिटीज के अपनी औलाद के लिए और आपकी बात बिल्कुल ठीक है कि शुरू वहीं से होता है बट वे डू वी अपनी आने वाली नस्ल की जिंदगी हमने किसके हाथ में उसका किरदार उसके किरदार साजी किसके हाथ में छोड़ी हुई है ऑन होम वी हैव इन्वेस्टेड द लीस्ट तो ये खैर आप लोग करेंगे रिसर्च तो आपको और भी पता चलेंगे अच्छे से थैंक यू कश्मीर Uh, it is being reported by Amnesty International and Human Rights Watch as well. But do you see that only the advocacy of, uh, at international level, at United Nations or any other international forum, can help address the issues of Kashmiris or can help us resolve and transform the issue of Kashmir? Thank you so much. Um, a lot of people discuss that you know it's a big market, different West, and um, um, a lot of multinationals go there and. Uh, Uh, and there's an indian influence internationally thanks to their indian diaspora that is not politicized amongst different uh, various political parties and taking their dirty laundry to uk and to america and to canada instead they go there as indians even if they're from bjp or um, there's this is for the first time in the history that uh, hss rss ki ek sister organization has attacked uh, people from uh, from uh, the indian muslims from gujarat in 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 uk and india tried to hide that and tried to cover it up and said this was done something by the pakistani muslims settled in uk but that is a rare um, incident so this is one one of the major factors of marketing for india of uh, projecting that soft image uh, the soft power of india through their indian diaspora to engage more and more economic interests and also through their their showbiz industry of welcoming the world to invest showing them the glorious uh, picture but in reality whatever is happening over there the fascist regime the policies and the anti minority bills being passed uh, by uh, the jantar mantar by the rss akhand bharat narrative of not tolerating minorities like the sikhs like the dalits like the muslims like the post conversions of christians and then rss itself has been involved in terrorist activities in the past so here we have an edge if we want to counter because before we had manmohan singh he was a, like world famous economist who was heading um, india and who was the face of congress a soft secular face uh, and so they could hoodwink many things but now everything is out in the open their policies their political leaders their intolerance and we have seen a massive increase Uh, in in harassments in attacks in rape of uh, foreign tourists within india because of this mindset of hindutva akhand bharat and of not tolerating people even from their own faith hindu faith uh, they, they only believe in hindutva saffronization and whosoever is a moderate hindu is also uh, you know harassed or is cornered or uh, is even beaten up or uh, attacked uh, and uh, sidelined so this is something where we can have an added advantage whatever they're doing with the kashmiris 
and they're fascist, they're, they're radical. And we've had 14, I think, almost incidents of uh, that illegal exchange of uranium, uranium uh, for, uh, you know, making atomic bombs for the RSS. So in such a situation, and then being um, a humble student of economics, that how can we have long-term economic prosperity within India uh, when uh, there are no chances of uh, uh, long-term peace because uh, we're they're heading towards civil anarchy, uh, civil war situation, uh, and uh, they're not just in uh, you know crore minorities ki and already so many movements in the past, the farmers movement, the recent one we saw uh, how it took place and how strong it was and how we had a huge, we, we witnessed a huge uh, rally and protests and long marches, even in America by the Sikh community. Uh, it's, inter it's being internationalized, whatever India is doing with Kashmiris. So now it's a time to, you know, bring the world's global attention towards, uh, you know, settling the core issue of Kashmir. And only then can there be uh, long-term stability because the economic costs and the security costs are so high. As I was speaking before on 27th of February, when nuclear codes were exchanged in 2019, I mean, you know, uh, two thirds of the world could have been wiped out or like, you know, this is nuclear scientists saying that, you know, global famine, global ice age and, uh, and uh, people, you know, just uh, um, vanishing away. I mean, complete extinction of humanity. If, if India is going to head towards a, a war-like situation with Pakistan. So it's very important that all foreign investors should stop investing there until and unless there's stability. And I don't see stability in the long run. In the next three to four years, so it's a crazy situation. The recent uh, statement by, uh, by the Indian Army chief that, you know, from Azad Kashmir to Gilgit and other places. So we're heading towards war. And, it, and, and, and their mindset as... Uh, um, the respectable speaker was talking about that, you know, violent, violence, fanaticism, anger. That is what has been a win-win ticket for the RSS, for, for um, targeting the women, glorifying rape. And this is the first regime in the world which had a pro-rapist rally in Jammu when they raped a little girl, a girl child who was uh, Asifa. She was gang raped in, in a temple in Jammu by, by uh, RSS followers and politicians. So uh, in such a situation, I don't see, uh, I think any crazy person would invest even. Uh, and, and I think those who have invested in India, especially the Arab world, I would say, or the West, uh, I think Pakistan should also engage with them that, you know, you have heavy investments in India, so at least please try to tell them to shun this fascist policy of intolerance and, you know, accept uh, voices of dissent and to solve the Kashmir issue peacefully according to the UN resolution. So maybe through them, we could generate some kind of uh, pressure on India, uh, the Arab world or the other countries that are heavy investors there. So uh, I, it, it goes hand in hand, peace and economics. Thank you. وقت کی نزاکت مجھے ایک لمحہ نہیں دیتی کہ میں اپنے تاثرات کا اظہار کروں لیکن محترمہ بلکیس صاحبہ آپ کا اردو زبان پر عبور اور آپ کی گفتگو کی شائستگی نے ہمیں بہت متاثر کیا آپ کی محترمہ مشاہد صاحبہ آپ کی موجودگی نے ہمارے پروگرام کو چار چاند لگائے میں ایکٹنگ پریزیڈنٹ سے ریکویسٹ کروں گا کہ وہ سٹیج پر آ کے جو ہماری رپورٹ لانچ ہے اس کی ایک کاپی کا ایک سیٹ جو ہے وہ میڈم محترمہ مشاہد ملک صاحبہ کو پیش کریں اور ساتھ سوینر بھی ان کو دیں تینکیو ویم مچ رکی صاحبہ اینڈ مشاہد صاحبہ ایز ایکسپیکٹڈ ای ویری ویری ایڈوکیٹڈ ڈسکورس اینڈ دا ڈسکورس گوٹ می تھنکنگ that how little did I know about uh, some of the very vital aspects. And a uh, few themes resonated very clearly in this discourse. And one of them is the structural violence, the structure of inequity that pervades our uh, you know, society. Unless we correct that imbalance, it's very difficult to do any other reform. The second was uh, what you mentioned about uh, the public responsibility. When the state becomes a party to 
structural or cultural violence perpetrates atrocities, then that becomes something supra society. And uh, that needs to be condemned not only by the societies, but the international communities. And uh, I think uh, the term that she used, uh, public responsibility, and when the uh, public, that is state, becomes a party to that rape, that becomes a rape by the state. So that is something that we need to internalize as audience. Uh, on a personal note, uh, when the discourse took place, uh, it took me back to a book that I had read, 1987. Uh, that was uh, by one of my favorite uh, authors, Babsi Sidwa. Okay. So I was a young captain, 1987, so doing uh, a construction assignment uh, in KKH. And the book was about uh, a girl who was persecuted, hounded, and uh, who belonged to Kohistan. And Babsi Sidwa, the writer who has written uh, such classics as The Crow Eaters, yes. she weaves a magic and uh, takes us around the whole world. But the central message that resonates in that book is the plight of that uh, girl that she is afflicted with. How she is hounded not only by her own brothers, her own father, who makes it the point to kill her, dump her body, and uh, leave. So that was an aftertaste of uh, violence uh, that uh, remained with me wherever I went. And uh, sometime in the past, in the living uh, memory, we all know that there was a picture during the rounds on social media on which there were certain, you know, three convivial girls in a sprightly manner, just intoning songs on a wedding ceremony. And uh, after some times, they just went off the radar. And later on, world came to know that they had been killed. And society has not uh, probably uh, taken the culprit to the task. It is because of that structure of inequities inbuilt. It is not only educative, it is epistemic as well. And the third most important uh, uh, theme that resonated was the need for education. I, I couldn't agree with you more because uh, once we were growing up, there was a subject of civics uh, in the education uh, you know, syllabus, curriculums, it has been done away with. So I think this needs to be uh, yes. brought back. How to respect the women, how to get rid of these uh, macho, uh, masculine uh, type castes that you are straight jacketed into. So uh, with this, I thank uh, the three participants. The third one has already left. And before we do so, it is my duty to uh, uh, present to you a uh, study that we did. So this was in line with what we discussed that at policy level, we need to do empirical studies. So my team uh, comprising a very enterprising young researchers, Dr. Khuram, where is he? Is he here? Uh, Fazan? Yeah, please stand up. And, uh, and unfortunately, uh, Mahin and uh, Umar, they have just left us for a better uh, assignment. And uh, this was a study that was uh, based on uh, empirical evidence. So this team went around to five districts. So five districts were chosen as case studies, Rawalpindi, Lahore, Faisalabad, Multan, Gujamala. They went to the prisons and uh, we got this access because of our uh, contacts with the police and other security agencies. So these, this team was given access to the convicts who had been involved in the heinous uh, crimes. Mm -hmm. Crimes uh, against uh, the persecuted minorities and the violent crimes against uh, gender women. And they uh, interviewed those convicts. They carried out their quantitative and qualitative analysis. And they've come up with certain uh, recommendations or the conclusions which we will uh, just see. So we are formally launching this report today, and this would be printed, disseminated, and uh, the conclusions would be shared with the policymakers. And let me assure uh, the panel that uh, uh, 
uh, touch wood, we have a very good traction with the policy makers because we are under national security division and uh, because of the clout of our own principles. So whatever goes from this forum at least uh, sees the light of the day in the bureaucratic uh, days. It, it doesn't uh, wither on the vine. Uh, as you can see on the slides, uh, findings. So when uh, the convicts, they were interviewed, so majority did not know about the concept of uh, concept education. So they, they were not uh, uh, socialized into the concept of consent. Second, convicts did not understand the idea of legal age and considered the minors of age of 13, 14 to be capable of giving consent. Something very alarming. Taking advantage of a position of power. So we have discussed very well. This was empirically proven in our study. Go ahead. Next. Right. So what was the reason? The honor killing was a consequence of pressure of family and society. So again, those uh, stereotype notions, that structure of violence embedded in the societal mores and norms. Social pride. It was observed that unlike uh, rapists, the convicts of honor killing belong to active social backgrounds. This was very, very alarming. And yet, they were, some of them were educated, but they were so captive to that uh, uh, prejudice that they could not break free from that straight jacket. Now, uh, all other killers were of the view that vulgarity is the major issue of Pakistan. Look at another. So, appropriating to themselves the right to be judge, juror, and the executioner. Again, I'm relating from, uh, uh, from those notions that we perpetuate because of our uh, prejudices, social prejudices. Conventional gender uh, roles. So we typecast genders into particular roles. We socialize them and uh, even their families, uh, they, their views matter. Go ahead, please. Social influences. The convicts of child rape normally had an upbringing in bad company and disturbed around. This was empirically proven. Less religious tendencies were found in rape-related cases and honor killings. Divorce versus rape. The concept of divorce is a social taboo, while honor killing is considered a symbol of bravery. So this has emanated from those interviews of all those convicts that did in five major districts. Socioeconomic background. The rapists belong to a not impoverished, but fractured, broken homes, socioeconomic life due to joblessness, constant the rejection of marriage proposals, etc. Right, next. Okay, so when we uh, did this study, the case of that Sri Lankan manager was fresh. How he was dragged, he was killed because of a religious uh, violence on blasphemy issue. And uh, we have dovetailed that also into the conclusions. And this was, this was a very quick snapshot. So what we have done is that we have uh, wrapped a whole uh, package of recommendations. And if uh, there are any recommendations by the panel, once we show, uh, share this uh, report with you, so we'll be happy to include that as a sequel or as an addendum into the report. So uh, with these few words, uh, I again thank the participants for a very educative discourse. We all stand educated and all, uh, uh, all our gratitude to you. Thank you very much. 
جی میں تقریب کا اختتام کرتا ہوں رشتوں کی گہرائیوں کو تھوڑا اور مضبوط بناتے ہیں آپ ہم سے ملنے اور ہم آپ کو چائے پلاتے ہیں تو میں دعوت دوں گا کہ ہم